Hey everybody, I'm Eric, and I wanted to show off some unusual and potentially interesting stuff that I'm doing with uh, Audio Damage Tattoo. If you're not familiar with it, uh, Tattoo is a drum synth, which is made by the fine folks at Audio Damage, and uh, it models some classic drum machines from the days of yesteryear, such as the 808, the 909, and even the lowly boss DR110, as Chris Randall puts it in the README. Apparently, its symbol had some pleasing sonic characteristics, so they recreated its sound. Inside of Tattoo, there are 12 voices, and uh, each one has its own set of parameters that you can change to change its sound. And each one of those parameters has its own automation lane here in the center in this mod sequencer, which is pretty cool and it allows you to do stuff like fill in, you know, you could just draw in whatever automation you wanted for it. There's some presets here like a sine wave, a ramp, you can randomize it. And uh, my favorite is you can use this rand reset button which will generate a new random pattern every time uh, it rolls back around to the one on that particular pattern. So it allows you to add some, some dynamism and some variety to your patterns so they don't feel so static. Additionally, uh, in addition to the automation, you can also add or subtract beats for that particular voice uh, this left slider um, removes beats uh, at the far right hand side that will add you know 100% of the beats that you've played and the left side it will play zero of the beats that you played and the inverse uh, for this other one which will add additional things which are not necessarily programmed into that sequence but it will add them in for you. So this is really cool but it makes for a dilemma because in order to these, use these cool features you have to program every pattern into the sequencer here. You have to actually go in and place the notes inside of here uh, and, and lay out your automation for each one of the voices that you want uh, which means that you can't integrate it as easily into the rest of a track that you're making in Ableton. You kind of have to go all in with Tattoo and I found it a little hard to uh, bridge those two worlds. So then I read that Tattoo, in addition to responding to this normal 4x4 style MPC grid of uh, notes starting at C1, C above middle C, also responds to notes starting at C3 as pattern change notes. So uh, you could make a sequence which plays the uh, drum patterns using higher notes that aren't actually sounded themselves, but which indicate to Tattoo that it ought to change uh, change patterns. And that's what I've done here. I made a, a pattern that's a, effectively the, you know, the sequence for my song that I'm trying to put together here and uh, uses these high range notes as a way of controlling which pattern comes up. Now, one unusual thing about this is that uh, Tattoo, much like Ableton, if you have it quantized to change up here, you know, at one bar, eight bars or whatever, it doesn't change the pattern immediately. It changes the pattern on the one of the next measure that comes up. So in order to get the sequence to work correctly, you have to hit the note, you have to send the note slightly before the one comes around for the on the measure that you want to change. So normally you would see something like, you know, it, 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 we want to change things on the, on the eight after an eight bar intro. And here I have it sent on, uh, on, on six and it will come around on, on that eight and uh, be, be ready to change once that comes around. But it does make for a little bit of a strange offset as you're thinking about how and, and when to, to place the notes to change patterns. Uh, when it plays back, everything comes back correctly. And I'll go ahead and play it back and you can see what happens here. As it's playing back uh, in the uh, control panel for it, you can see that it'll half light the next pattern that's going to come up as soon as it's going to, as soon as it changes the sequence. And uh, so there we go to four and five, and we're moving on through the through the song this way. Uh, this is uh, pretty cool, but like I said, it's a little bit weird. Um, one other cool thing about Tattoo is that it has the ability to route the audio output from each of these twelve different voices into one of six buses that then show back up in the DAW as a separate audio channel. So I have mine grouped together so that the uh, kick is on A, the snare, both snare sounds and the uh, rim shot are on B, uh, my, all my percussion, so the toms and the um, cowbell and the clap are on E, I have my uh, high, closed hat and high hat on C and then a symbol on D. So uh, back over in Ableton you can see these kicking along as different audio that is grouped together underneath this audio. But the fact 
fact that they're different audio tracks means that I can do things like set a reverb up on the snare that only affects the snare. I can send the percussion off to a delay off uh, to a delay bus and uh, get get an effect that's um, that doesn't affect the kick drum. Say. So that's pretty cool. Um, one last thing, and then I'll stop. Tattoo is, as I showed, it's receiving MIDI notes from the DAW, but it's also sending MIDI. Uh, each of the tracks that it's generating comes out as a, a you know, separate note, and uh, you can, in fact, if you get really in, on board with um, uh, the drum, with the step sequencer in here, and you want to use that for everything, you can flip Tattoo over in, in this button in the bottom right of the, the control panel in MIDI-only mode, and it'll just send MIDI back into the host. But even if you don't do that, you can uh, receive MIDI, and uh, uh, in this on this nine, track nine here, I've set up the MIDI to route from the drum rack and then from uh, from tattoo, and recorded a run through of the song uh, that I that I'm playing now uh, previously, and you can see here that it's you know sending all of the all the notes along, um, and also in addition to the notes, it sends along the automation with them. So, uh, all that cool stuff that I just showed about the randomization that can be captured uh, back in your DAW and reused for other instruments, other tracks. You can even cut it up into clips and reuse it in a different uh, different track entirely if you want. So uh, that's all for now. I haven't seen so much info about Tattoo out there, but I think it's a cool little software drum to hope this was interesting. And uh, as I said, I'm not sure if these are great ideas, if they're blindingly obvious, if they're completely wrong-headed, uh, but I'd welcome any feedback from it. I'm Eric, aka Apook, A-H-P-O-O-K, and remember, death needs time for what it